Hi, this is Joe Lukowitz. I'm with Coldwell Banker. Welcome to our monthly live stream where we talk about the real estate market in the Tampa area. Uh, normally we do this on the second Thursday of every month. This time we're doing it on the third Thursday, of course, because of Hurricane Irma. And that's probably the biggest news in our business right at the moment. What were the effects of Hurricane Irma? How have they impacted the real estate market? What's it look like going forward? And, and that's what a lot of people have been asking me. Uh, and we can kind of talk about that, getting right into that. Um, hurricane Irma, as everybody knows, very big hurricane affected all of the state. In Tampa Bay, luckily we were not hit directly. A lot of people who lost power, but then I had calls the very next day from people who were ready to buy a house, ready to sell a house. Uh, so it, it's gonna affect business just a little bit. One of the main factors that I'm working with right now is that every house that had been appraised already, all may have been all set to go to close within the week, two weeks, three weeks. If the appraisal had been done, they had to reinspect the house, at least take pictures on the outside. Some, uh, some appraisers had to go inside. Now, what this means is, for example, I have one appraiser, he said, I have to reinspect 50 homes. It means he's already done the appraisal on 50 homes that he's done through the last month, month and a half. He has to, had to go physically go by, take pictures, all four corners of the house, the blot, make sure it was all okay. Uh, in some cases, he had to go inside. And this just makes the rest of, if you were ordering an appraisal from a mortgage company with this using this particular guy. He had 50 other things that he had to do, so it's just slowed up the whole process. Um, some of the places where the mortgage companies are working out of had no power. One lender that I'm working with, their, their main office is in Key West. Now, they were still able to do business because they evacuated, but going back, it kind of, it, it's slowing things up. Um, obviously, getting rid of uh, trees and debris uh, has made a difference. Most of the houses where people had to, uh, where there was any damage, they've had, if you're selling a house, they had to redisclose any issues that may have come up. Did a tree fall? Did, a, did you have a leak in your roof? Were there any issues that were caused by the hurricane that may have, that may have been a problem? Um, flood insurance, it's not an immediate issue. I'm going to guess that in the years to come uh, that that's gonna be addressed and probably quicker than, than it would have been before just because of between Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma uh, and now right today as Hurricane Maria is out, uh, not affecting the states that much, but Puerto Rico, flood insurance is gonna to be top of mind with uh, regulators and uh, legislators because the, um, the federal emergency um, FEMA does not have enough money to cover um, current flood insurance costs. Now, many people, especially I work in Northwest Tampa, they're not directly affected by um, flood rates from rising waters from the Gulf or the Bay. However, if you're on a lake or a river, They've had many issues there, and that's where um, flood insurance, if you're in a zone A and the house is in zone A, if you do not have a flood elevation certificate, uh, you probably ought to get one because it can make your rates go be dramatically less and still get you coverage. For example, if you live on a conservation area, meaning you've got a cypress head behind you, for example, it gets flooded. Part of your property may be in zone A. Your house may be in zone X. Many lenders will require you to get flood insurance, but if you have a flood elevation certificate that shows that the house is above the 100-year floodplain, lately the flood insurance for that house has been $450, $460 a year. If you don't have a flood elevation certificate, your cost could be as high as $2,000, $2,200 a year. Uh, and I think along the coast, it's, it's gonna be considerably higher. Um, that, that's kind of some of the main effects of, of the hurricane. Business is still moving forward. Uh, we are 
for Northwest Tampa, Tampa is more of a working community. We're at our slower time, coming to our slower time of year once school started. Uh, there'll still be a lot of sales being made. Uh, inventories are still very tight. Um, according to the uh, National Association of Realtors around the country, the market dropped about 1.7% in sales uh, this July from last July, but that's partly because of being a very tough market and also because of Hurricane Harvey and Irma. So this is the time where I take questions and love to answer. If anybody's got any questions, love to ask, you know, send me answers, you know, questions in and see if I can uh, answer anything for you. So, um, oh, so here is the first question. Has Hurricane uh, Irma affected Tampa's real estate market? Again, we just talked about that. Closings are delayed. Um, I, I could say I, I had 18 closings set for within the last month, and I would have to say that at least 12 of them have been delayed uh, some were pushed out far enough that it wasn't a problem, but at least 12 of them got delayed. Some at least a week, most two to three weeks, just because they had to get reinspected by the appraiser, um, make sure any uh, one house that I had, uh, which was a cash sale, they had a big, huge oak tree. And in the contract, the seller is required to remove the tree or prune the tree. They didn't have to replace it. So just kind of everybody's been reading their contracts very thoroughly to find out what is the legalities in the contract mean to me with having hurricane insurance. But I would say that the business is probably usual, just slower. So um, how do I know if, I, if I'm going to purchase a home is a danger of having a sinkhole from underneath or near it? Unfortunately, there's no really inexpensive way to do this. The cheapest way, and I don't know the exact cost, it'd be uh, underground detecting radar, um, where they, they send either sonar waves or, or um, ground waves and it comes up. But it's about $3,000 per lot to check this. Um, a lot of builders, when they're developing uh, a project, a developer, They'll scan the whole area with underground radar to avoid any sinkholes that they may know about that come up, but they can afford to do it because they're doing a broad area. Um, but most people as a, as a buyer, if you're interested in a home, as part of your home inspection, home inspection would be normally about $450. You do the underground detection, it adds another 3,000. It makes it exorbitant to do that. Um, now, there is a history put in on if somebody's had a sinkhole claim, that can be found out from your insurance agent or it is registered on the public records. So that would be a good place to start. So um, are there different financing options for students who are looking to purchase a home? Um, many uh, offer first-time home buyer credits. Sometimes the, the Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, the state offers. A, a local, you know, um, a bond issue that they have. I, the, one of the first places to start is talk to a mortgage broker. And I've got the names of a few good ones that I'd be happy to have you uh, get hold of that can give you a better idea on that. Um, is flood insurance necessary if I don't live in an evacuation zone? And that was a question that came up a lot from people talking this last time. Now, for example, where I live, which is in Lutz, um, we're 55 feet above sea level. We are not considered an evacuation zone. Davis Island is an evacuation zone. Um, if you're not in an evacuation zone, but you are on, as we discussed before, a river, a conservation lot, uh, you may be required to have flood insurance because if, if there's rising water from rain, it fills up your lake, um, can hit your house, Yes, you would be required to have flood insurance, even though you're not in an evacuation zone. Um, the rates vary. What an elevation certificate is, is a surveyor will come out and determine the height of your, the, the foundation above the 100-year floodplain. If you're below the 100-year floodplain, your flood insurance is going to be considerably higher. Let's just say it was going to be $2,500 a year at the old, before they 
raise rates. If you're at above the 100-year floodplain, most people can get insurance lately for about $450 to $460 a year. Big difference. This is why if you think you're in a flood zone, if you're part of your property is in flood zone A, and you can check Hillsborough County maps on that, uh, get a flood elevation certificate. Cost on that, it's about $400 to get that. Um, another question, what are the current most popular neighborhoods in Tampa? Excellent question, and I think it's gonna vary depending upon what you're looking for. Um, south of Kennedy, South Tampa, has been the highest appreciation area for years. Uh, we're talking Pomacea, we're talking Bayshore Boulevard, we're talking Hyde Park, we're talking um, uh, uh, West Shore area. Those areas have all been doing very, very well. Um, generally, the last few years, averaging nine to 10% per year appreciation for the last three to four years. Um, on the north side of town, you're looking at West Chase, extremely popular, people like the stores, they like the pools, they like the walking paths, they like being able, they just like the whole community. You're probably looking at there about eight or 9% per year for the last few years appreciation. Old Carrollwood, which is Bush Boulevard and Dale Mabry, uh, surrounding kind of the Lake Carroll area has been very popular. Um, it's got parks that everybody has the rights to use. It's very, relatively convenient to town. Uh, now that's been helped by the high rising cost of South Tampa um, because the, the prices of a home in Carrollwood um, is probably double in South Tampa as it would be in the old Carrollwood area. Um, then as you head further north, the market slows a little bit. Carrollwood Village is doing very well. As you head more towards Pasco County, they've been averaging four to five percent appreciation per year. Uh, and as you head to Hernando and that about 3%. Although I'm reading in the paper today, Hernando's been doing very well recently, but that may have been partly because they had been so hard hit before, a lot of foreclosures, a lot of, of other things. So a lot depends on where you wanna be. Um, you will pay, if you want a house in South Tampa, you will pay almost double what you will in uh, Northwest Tampa area for the same house, depending upon where you are. It's almost, it's almost double the cost. Uh, which areas have the best schools? Again, um, in Northwest Tampa, one of the hottest areas has been Villa Rosa Cheval, which has got Steinbrenner High School, McKittrick uh, and McKinley. They're all three right together. Um, I would say look at all the schools, see what their rating is, um, and that can make a difference for you. Some people, schools make no difference to it all. Um, so, but that, that's one of the questions people coming in from out of town, they ask, I wanna be in the best school district ever. Uh, the site to go on to is Hillsborough County uh, School System. Uh, I don't know the exact address, but uh, the exact um, uh, website address, but they do have one and they rank all the schools and they tell you what any particular address, what school that it's in. Uh, if my landlord doesn't offer it directly, what is the best way for me to get renter's insurance? I don't handle rentals, so I'm not going to be an expert on this. I know people have talked to their regular insurance agent, like we're Allstate, you know, they, their insurance, if they offer homeowners insurance, you can almost always get renters insurance and you really need that for, to help with liability insurance and things like that. Um, what is the first step I should take when purchasing a home? This is a great question. People will call me all the time. They'll say, hey, I want to go see this house at um, XYZ Street. And I, my first question is, have you already talked about getting a loan? Have you discussed what you can afford with a mortgage broker? Have you gotten pre-qualified for a loan? Partly, then you will know exactly what you can afford. Um, you won't waste your time. You'll know they can pull up a quick credit report. Um, most mortgage brokers don't charge you anything for that. Um, they'll, they'll give you an idea. Can you afford $200,000? Can you afford a $300,000 home? Um, do you have any bad issues that you don't know about that'll stop you from buying? Um, if you go to make an offer on a place, the sellers are going to want to know, are you pre-approved for a loan? Can you actually get this loan? Are you going to have problems getting it? 
what type of, and, and you'll be able to find out what type of financing works best for you. Are there programs that are available that, that can make it work? What are your costs, total costs to go into getting a new place? For example, you're borrowing, you're buying a house for $300,000. Your loan closing costs are probably going to be three, three and a half percent of that, you know, which is, you know, total of, uh, I mean, your closing costs itself might be about 2,000, about 2%, but with escrows and that, about three and a half. So that becomes another six to $9,000 that you may not have figured that you were going to need. So that's my first suggestion is get talking with a good mortgage broker. And I know the names of a few. So feel free to email me or give me a call. Um, if the market is bad and I absolutely have to sell my home, what should I do? And uh, generally, I do best when the market is good to poor. That's when, in our business, there's just a lot of realtors. Everybody decides to get a real estate license when the market's really good. They all think showing homes is wonderful and it's easy. There's so many details that happen after we sell a house that that makes all the work really hard. But where, where I really shine is when people need solid answers. And I'm selling eight to nine houses per month on average. So I know what's happening in the market at any given time. So if I'm saying the first thing to do is hire a good real estate agent like myself, then that's what I really mean. Because when the market's really bad, you need solid advice. Have you got enough equity to sell? If you don't have enough equity to sell, what's going to be your options? If you do have enough equity to sell, what's the real bottom line numbers? How long is it going to take? Where do you need to go? When do you need to be there? What's the best time of year to sell the house? All those factors are going to play into things. Who's going to be your best buyer? How's it going to get marketed? What's going to make it happen? And that's where someone talking to someone like myself is, is really important. And that's the first step you ought to do. But one of the questions that I tell everybody to ask is, if you're going to talk to somebody that you want to list your home with, are you working with the agent? Are you working with one of their team members instead? If you're, or are you working uh, with somebody who's brand new in the business? How many houses does that actual individual sell a year? How many per month? Remember, I just said eight to nine per month. That means that I know what's happening in the market at any given time. I have a lot of people that will talk to somebody who's got a huge team, but you may get Mary Jane Smith, who's been with her team for two months, and she personally has never sold a house. You think you're talking to, to, the, to the major agent, and you're not. Now, and candidly, in Northwest Tampa, I sell more than most teams combined, uh, and that's just me as an individual. I have an assistant, but otherwise, you call someone like myself, you're getting me, you're getting the best advice, and that's my recommendation there. Are condominiums a good investment? They can be. Um, I think everything is depends on where you buy and what the track record is and were they a true condominium, were they apartment conversion? Um, there's a lot of factors that play into that. Um, are they the right area of town? Are they? But here's my biggest thing. If you're going, this is not from an investment point of view. If you're going to buy for yourself to live in. You have to like where you're living. You still have to, it has to be a good value, but, but if you don't like it, you're gonna be wanting to sell it sooner than you should have, and, and, and I never recommend that. Just buy something that you really like that you think will be good. Let's see if there's any other questions coming up. Well, right at the moment, doesn't look like anything. So again, we usually do this on the second Thursday of every month, the live stream. Uh, we had to delay for Irma. The big news is interest rates have still remained flat. They're liable to increase a little bit with what the Fed's doing, um, but the market is still going to be really good. We're low on inventory, so if you're thinking of holding off on buying, I wouldn't. There's just not, you know, prices will still continue to go up. As I told you, South Tampa, 8 to 9% a year. Carrollwood, 8 to 9% a year. West Chase, 8 to 9% a year. You know, all of Northwest Tampa, at least 6 to 7% a year. So if you've been sitting on the sidelines, you're renting a house, good time to think about buying a place. And again, I'm Joe Lukowitz, and no one works harder to sell your home, so if I can help you anyway, give me a call.